All right, well, this isn't a good situation. The opponent is able to get full branded combo off, interrupting my extension play. And again, this is kind of the limitation of one Empin. So at this point, we do have to let the opponent combo off because we have no more interruption, unfortunately. Our saving grace here is that they haven't popped the Empin, so they have to bring everything out in defense. So we won't get OTK'd this turn, and we have potentially the evenly matched to wipe the opponent's board. They bring out their Dragos to Pele in attack mode, which is interesting, but it makes sense because Lubelion will get the Beast now to pop the Empin, and now everything else can come out in attack mode and start wiping the field. So the opponent was able to get all of their branded continuous spells and traps in rotation here. They're going to get a lot regained back on the field and branded in red to hand since they have no Albaz or um, Despia card to target. But um, we're going to go battle phase crash into the kit and then evenly matched which is going to leave the opponent on Dragos to Palea. We know that with all of our birds in rotation and the advent in hand we are able to dodge the Dragos to Palea. and just like that Branded's board can be beat. The video of me getting to master one is linked in the description below and in that video I mentioned that I had to change my deck list back to using dimensional fissure instead of patchy and dark ruler no more and the full decklist video is linked in the description as well as you know my analysis of the reasoning behind that. This video is going to show you what it was like in Master 2 going up against uh, tier limits pretty much all the time like I mentioned in that video. Pro probably over 70% of my matches in Master 2 were against tier limit and that's from a sample size of about 25-30 matches that it took me longer than it should have to get to Master 1 from Master 2. But using the patchy and the Dark Ruler no more was just not as impactful as it was in Master 2 and Master 3. In this opening match, thankfully we were able to stop the opponent with Shifter, banishing what they were going to get off of their tier limit extension, and as a result they go into Time Thief Redoer with the Sharon and the Rhino Heart, not a Baguska, looking at their decklist later on, and the opponent after this actually, who was also on tier limit, they were not playing Baguska, so it looks like tier limit have cut that from their, their list. But this opponent was clearly just hoping that the Time Thief Redoer could survive on the field and I wouldn't have anything to beat over it and then they can use the effect to fuse with the Sharon by detaching it next turn when they were no longer under Shifter. However, we are able to set up full combo here and have all the Flow Wanderers, Power Spells and Traps in rotation. That's enough for the opponent to realize that we've outed their board and we're have, we have control of the match now and that is a easy victory and a good old scoop from the opponent. So this match has some pretty interesting interactions, I guess you could say, that are definitely worth understanding if you want to play Floanderese, because it can definitely be the difference between winning and losing some of your games. Going first, our opening hand obviously isn't the greatest. We're easily beaten or stopped by one Imperm, one Ash, but thankfully, you know, the opponent doesn't have those interruptions, so we are going to be able to resolve the Empin. But just like I've said in other videos, the traditional board of just Dreaming Town and Empin isn't really strong enough with just one Empin because your only Empin is on field, you can't rotate through another one uh, in order to uh, get more tribute summons on the board and interrupt your opponent's plays. Now, again, the Dark Ruler, if I can survive, can potentially put in work, uh, and so could the Evenly Matched, but the opponent is smart. You know, they started off with the Graph of Fusion because they pitched the King of the Swamp to get the Poly, and whether or not I activated the Dreaming Town in response to the King of the Swamp, um, you know, I didn't have to, I'd have to anticipate that they were going to normal summon the Rhino and then fuse into the Grapha, but I couldn't really put anything up that was meaningful on board anyways. And again, this is what I'm talking about where I had to put up an Apex and maybe what, try to negate the normal summon, try to negate the Poly, um, something to prevent the Grapha, but they were likely going to be able to mill and fuse into it anyways. Uh, so they do have that Omni Negate on board now, and, you know, as soon as they activate the pitch of the Rhino Heart, whether or not I activated Dreaming Town then or after the Grapha was on board, it didn't matter because the Grapha would eventually just be able to negate either the trap or the bird. So regardless, they were gonna stop us from continuing on summoning with the trap card. And ever since this card was released, it definitely made tier limit back uh, to the top of the food chain in terms of tier lists, uh, surpassing Sprite once again. I've talked about this before, it's the problem in the TCG right now with Minadium. These decks that can put up very oppressive boards in terms of like a lot of uh, like combo potential with Synchro Monsters, Fusions, etc. Uh, they usually need a, a key weakness and Dark Ruler No More and or Evenly Matched was that key weakness. But when they have trap cards or other Omni Negates that they're able to make, uh, it makes cracking their boards that much harder. You, you essentially need multi-card setups in order to beat them. 
uh, or you have to hand trap them hoping that they can not extend far enough past your hand traps. So in this instance the opponent does put back the Graffa and they go to Dragos to Palea and negate my Empin. Um, they're going to then go ahead and activate Scream and go for the Mill 11 which is absolutely nuts and at this point you might be thinking yeah Quantum like clearly the tier limit board just powered through you. The combo potential is too, too strong and um, they're going to just set up whatever they want. Um, the, the saving grace, just like with the opening clip against Branded, is you know the one Empin being in attack mode um, or just you know being on the field really is forcing the opponent to bring out everything in defense mode in order to activate their effects. So we look at you know what the mills are. You know they mill everything. I'm not going to go over it, but they also mill Kelbuck and Aikido on top of that. Um, but the opponent makes a critical mistake here. They bring out their Collider Heart in attack mode. You know it makes sense because they want to end up getting some offensive pressure on the board. But the problem is, they think that the Dragostopalia most likely negated the Empin. And it does, but you have to be very careful with understanding how these things um, actually work. Negate the activated effects of your opponent's monsters that have predator counters. So Empin has one activated effect, and that is when you attack into it, it I can banish a card and cut your monster's attack in half, uh, attack and defense in half. I can't use that effect with uh, Dragostopalia being applied to Empin because of the predator counter. What is not the activated effect of Empin is its continuous effect that says monsters in attack mode can't activate their effect. That is not an activated effect of Empin. That is a continuous effect of Empin. So that is not negated by the Dragostopalia because the Empin has the Predator counter. So the activated effect of Kaleido Heart cannot be activated because it's in attack mode. If they would have brought it out in defense, they could have activated the effect. So that's an important interaction that can help you win games. Now, the mill 10 wasn't great for us. We lose a lot of important resources. Look at all these birds. We lose the one of Stree, the one of, ah, uh, geez, the one of Ryza, a Toucan, an Empin, and um, yeah, just, you know, unexplored winds, etc. The opponent gets Snow. That's not good for us. They get Keldo. They get obviously more fusion names, um, and they're getting, you know, further resources to hand here. They go into Elf, which you know, can activate after the snow hits the board because it flipped the Empin face down, which means now your activated effects can happen. But then for some reason they bring out a Murley, um, and that was your only level two in the graveyard. Why would you bring it out during this turn? Why wouldn't you wait to bring it out during my turn? You know, these are high rank players. So two potentially uh, misplays that could have cost the opponent the game here. So they're gonna go ahead and beat over the Empin. That's fine, hit me for 3000, that's fine. I turn my toggle off because I don't want to give them the indication that I have evenly matched uh, because I knew they were going to set cards and it's great that they set three. So right here I don't actually need to go for Dark Ruler but the reason I do this is because if I attempt to go Battle Phase that passes priority to the opponent which gives them the opportunity to activate Elf. If they never summon the Murley, doing this was the right play because it prevents them from summoning the Murley with the Elf but because they have nothing actually to target I didn't actually need to Dark Ruler. But just know that that's an important interaction as well. So now we're going to go battle phase, and even if the opponent has crime and a card to discard off of it, we have a second evenly. The opponent ends on just the Kaleido after the evenly uh, clears him out, and we have Robina and Eaglin in, in rotation, and we still have Snowl in the deck, but that is enough for the opponent to end up scooping because we are going to be able to rotate. This was another kind of crazy match. Uh, going first, we do have the Patchy and the Empin. But we do have again a pot of prosperity which if it doesn't get ashed is usually always going to unbrick your hand that's why they limited limited this card to one and it got limited to one in ocg as well most likely on the next ban list in tcg it will also get limited to one uh, but anyways on to the actual match here we do reveal some pretty decent options we could have taken the robina uh, or you know the eaglin but we opt to take advent because i want to advent away the empin for map now of course if the opponent had ash we would have been in trouble, but if we took Robina and we normal summon it, they had Ash, we lose anyways. At least this way we get map in rotation and we can start banishing birds so we can hopefully play around Imperm. The opponent is on 55 cards, which is something to take note of. Even though they're on the Labyrinth sleeves, I would not assume that they are on 50 or sorry, 60 card Labyrinth deck. So we're gonna go ahead and start off the summoning here. The opponent does not have the interruption, so we banish the advent and activate the Robina, and then the opponent does reveal Havness. Now on a 60 card deck, it's unlikely that you hit off this, but they do hit a Sharon, unfortunately. Um, so they're, they, they will be able to fuse. Um, and you know, I can't summon the Patchy to say like, oh no, you can't fuse because it has to be a winged beast that you summon off the small birds. It's only off of Empin where you can summon the Patchy because it just says normal one monster. 
Now, I don't go for the Toucan here because of the Havness and then, you know, seeing the Fuse here. I go for Eaglin because I want to actually set up a uh, Ryza play because I still have my normal summon for turn and I'm going to be able to put Patchy on board. So they bring Kikalos in defense, which again, neither here nor there because they can just switch it to attack during their turn. And we are going to indeed go for Ryza. Now the opponent is going to be able to get their Kikalos search still, but we're also going to stack the Maxi that they milled um, so that we know that they're going to have a dead draw. So the opponent basically in this scenario trades Havness for Sharon and they're still going to draw a Max C, but they're going to end on, yeah, just additional cards. Oh no, no, still five cards, never mind, and then draw their sixth for turn. So the end result is the same because we're able to set up the Patchy, unless the opponent has a way to outmap or Patchy, like Imperm or something like that, but if they had Imperm, they likely would have used it already. Um, they could have Duster though, that's a possibility, I guess one in 60. Um, or Cosmic Cyclone in the main deck, who knows. But this setup is going to force them to Normal Summon, which is just as good as Trap Card, because it's still going to allow me to rotate, get my Empin that was banished back in rotation, as well as summon the Ryza Mega Monarch to protect the Patchy by spinning back whatever they Normal Summon. The opponent starts off with the um, Foolish Burial, though, into the Aguido, which is very, very good. Um, and yeah, they're on like a Sprite Tier Limit variant, which is odd. They get the Snow, but again, you can't summon it under the Patchy. Uh, no names to fuse with, unfortunately. That's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see them mill names. Of course, the one time we want them to see them to see the names milled, we don't. But they do get some activated effects here in the screen to search for a trap card. We lose, okay, nothing of too much significance uh, because again, we do play two tokens, so you know we have a second one that we can search out. Oh no, we do lose double unexplored wins. That's not good. Yeah, so we have no more unexplored wins that we can search. Um, and yeah, our next card I think was going to be part of extravagance. That would have been pretty good. Uh, so we do lose that, which is unfortunate. But yeah, the opponent grabs, so like as expected, the normal summon of Sharon is going to trigger map. So just like that, we're going to uh, summon the Eaglin, get back the Robina. Robina searched the second token here. And I guess, I bet you the opponent was like, are you kidding me? The opponent is playing two token because they probably think, yeah, you're not going to get your Empin back because your only token is, is in the graveyard. And, uh, you know, you can't banish it with Stree. So no, we do play the two token. Uh, and then we are able to go into the Empin now get back our street and search for trap card. Uh, again, it would have been better to search for unexplored wins here, but we milled both of them, unfortunately. So we have to go for trap essentially. Uh, and then, yeah, Ryza on field, spin back the Sharon and, you know, spin back another card in their graveyard as well. We know one of their cards is Max C. They're gonna draw Sharon for turn. They're not gonna be able to out the Fossil Dyna this turn. We are gonna keep them locked. And then, you know, with map, we're just going to OTK them at, at, on, during our turn, most likely anyways. So the opponent just ends up scooping to save time.